Welcome to our solar electric trailer journey. Today we're going to talk about the process it took in getting our RV fixed and the time, the length of time that it took. Yeah, you, you may recall clear last fall we had a, a blowout on the trailer and it did some significant damage. We'll, we'll show, we'll insert some of the video and photos of the damage, but it, it, it completely destroyed the bottom of the trailer behind the wheel. And that happened to be the place where all of the expensive yeah. solar electronics are, are placed. And, and uh, we had spent 100 hours putting yeah. that in. So it was just a heartbreaking uh, situation. But uh, here we are about five months later yeah. and, and the repair is done. So we kind of yeah. wanted to report on that process because I think it's relevant if you've got an RV to understand how long this can take in 2023. So the first step was getting our insurance involved yeah. and State Farm was great within about four days we had a little bit of money from them that process was really pretty smooth we sent them pictures and video they didn't even come out to see it they just sent us some money so that was easy you had taken some really good pictures though so they yeah yeah worked. well you know we uh, <laughs> i don't know about good pictures well, but we had a lot of pictures so we had the we had it documented so that helped and then we had uh the step of finding uh someone to do it and and I thought this would be easy. I thought people would fight for the chance to fix our RV. Not the case. No. Not the case. No. That was really interesting. Yeah. So it took several weeks for us to go back and forth with two or three folks that, you know, there were, in the end, I think it was only one firm that would really even interact with us. Uh, to get that going. Well, so. and that's because there are no A-liner dealers in our neighborhood. Good point. And so it took a while to find a group of people that would actually come and do it. Yeah, we hadn't fully appreciated how that was going to impact our situation. But yeah, there uh, there are no A-liner dealers here in Jacksonville. So the next issue, once we had agreed with a firm that they were going to do it, was uh, for them to order some parts. And that process took a surprising amount of time. They, of course, A-liners are, are pretty rare here because there isn't a dealer. And so they had to invent, for the first time, the supply chain for getting A-liner parts. And so it took about 60 days yeah. for them to get the parts yeah. in. And half that time was them figuring out, I think, uh, where to get parts for yeah. our trailer. Uh, so then the next step, they got the parts in, so then the next step was scheduling. And, and uh, this particular company is a, is a mobile RV repair shop. And so they specialize in coming to your, your camper, wherever it is, which makes sense in a lot of yeah. circumstances. But it really wasn't optimal it for us. It didn't work, yeah. Because <laughs> we uh, keep our little RV in the garage in our condo. And so we don't have a big place where you can, you know, put it up and then do work on it. See, doing maintenance on a vehicle violates the, our HOA yeah, rules. Yeah. So we had to get special permission to actually do it and with a certain time period to get it done in. And we did get permission, which was we were grateful for. Yeah, so but that took more time yeah, yeah. Uh, to allow for the permission process and all of the things. And then we, you know, we had a couple of personal things going on, so we put it off an extra week or two. They came, they did the work uh, last week, and we are back in business yeah. and we're planning our next camping trip. So we're excited. And once they actually came, it only took two days to fix it. Yeah, of course it took. Took them uh, hours. <laughs> yeah. Long uh, days. L long days and teams of people. So yeah. it was amazing how much work they did for us. We were really, really grateful for the work they did. I would note that one of the things that we talked about with them while we had them was about tires for trailers. And we have talked about the importance of replacing tires often. And they reiterated that. They echoed that. They confirmed that that's a good thing. The, the head guy suggested that uh, trailer tires need to be replaced every five years at least. The, act, the next factor that he mentioned that I hadn't thought about and we hadn't come across in our research before that we want to share today is the idea of going up at least one grade level 
the tires are trailer tires are graded by weight that they're designed to carry and he suggested go up at least one weight class on your tire so that you're not stressing the tire uh, you know at its capacity every time you take it anywhere or even have it parked in the garage so i thought that was a great and important yeah, insight we wanted tip. to share yeah. is that get go go up a class for for your tires so that's the, to help them last longer and and avoid yeah. the problem we had because it, it the, the cost is just mind-numbing to think through all the camping trips we missed oh, and yeah. all the hassle, the hours we yeah. spent managing this. Instead of upgrading and polishing yeah. and having fun, we're we're repairing and struggling. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Great tip. Upgrade your tires. So, that, that's kind of it for this week. Hey, thanks for joining us today. If you have, Please leave your comments. If you have any and want to join in on the conversation, we'd love to hear from you. See you later. Bye. When we heard our Rivian wouldn't be delivered until Christmas of 2023, we decided to see what we could tow with our Chevy Bolt. Launching our solar electric trailer journey. We have a lot to learn and we're sharing what we discover along the way. We've added solar panels to our A-Liner Scout pop-up trailer. Preparing us for doing the same on a bigger trailer when the Rivian arrives. Join us by subscribing now.